Man, I had to close, like, literally every tab in the history of existence in order to get to this point. Hello, hi. So I found these gray sweatpants at uh, Wet Seal that are the perfect shade of troll gray sweatpants. They're like the best interchangeable cosplay item ever. So I'm wearing my Nipita shirt with my gray sweatpants and I have that fin hat that I've had for a while. I'm gonna be dyeing that thing blue and making it Nipita hat like so I actually have something to wear. Happy Homestuck Day! Probably by the time this actually gets posted, Homestuck Day will be long since over. I actually still have another video I need to encode and post, but I've been lazy. Also, I kind of really don't care about what's going on in the top banner anymore because I really need to get my ass in gear and get to act fucking six. So, um, all text. Whoa. Who even really gives a fuck? So. Um. The condescension. Yes. We are going to hit Cascade, I swear to fuck. Oh. That's no good. <clears throat> if the lapse in her custodial bond was significant enough, it was not just political power she risked. At such a distance, she sacrificed concentration needed to curb its most dreadful psychic shriek of all, the galaxy-wide extinction event called the Vast Glub. Of course, this eventuality proved a fitting reward for such reckless expansion of her territory. She chose the worst time possible to explore further from the homeworld than she'd ever been. She was scouring the edge of the galaxy for systems to plunder when she received word of her planet's devastation by meteors. The young were being slaughtered. The mother grubble was dead. The end times were upon her people. She ordered all fleets to return to Alternia. But such was her empire's expansion and interplanetary occupation that few could make it in time to provide any meaningful defense. She instructed her helmsman to pilot the ship faster than he ever had, and he did so through extreme physical duress. He was able to leap across thousands of light years in a matter of hours. The exertion likely would have killed him if the glub didn't get to him first. Her touch could extend life, but never restore it to her lament. In that instant, her empire was gone. Glub Glib's swan song wiped out her entire race, save the Condess and her lone heiress, leaving the empire nothing more than a galactic necropolis of floating tombs. It makes you wonder how long they had to, like, they could leave Glub Glib alone before she flipped out. Because I can only imagine if Efri's like, I need to sleep now, Mom. And he's like, wake up, damn it, I'm hungry. <laughs> like, seriously. I think it's the middle of the day, go away. <laughs> Ugh. Dang. Galaxy Head. <laughs> and the handmaid's like, I'm going to fucking kill you. She was forced to continue the journey home on auxiliary power. Her ship now travels near the speed of light, a pale shadow of its former velocity. It would take her another 612 solar sweeps after the glove to reach her destination. She should arrive any minute now. When she does, she will find nothing but ruins and dust. If she cared to look closer, she would find a city of slain exiles, a man on the moon, and a pair of black lovers locked in a deadly dance. But whether she looks or not, one thing will find her with certainty. A new employment opportunity. So I guess all we really have to know is, for some reason, Hussey was in the Feltz mansion, and no one cares. You're making a mess, damn it. Are you paying attention, protege? This is where your role in the story begins. Now stop your pouting and listen, unless you want another helping at the backside of my- Oh, nuts. I seem to have forgotten my disciplinary room. Anyway, the last of the Twelve Ancestors arrived a bit late. In fact, she would cross through her portal six centuries after the Descendants had come and gone. There weren't many left to look after her, so she ended up in foster care. I remember it like it was yesterday, and for one who has as much time on his hands as I, it essentially was. Yeah, six hundred years is the, like, a friggin' blink of an eye for an immortal, in omnipotent being. Stop table flipping, hussy. Squeak. Aw. She's like, love me. <laughs> I would raise the girl to be groomed for her calling. My lessons would emphasize obedience, mastery of the clockwork magics, and being locked in a room. 
As you must have gathered by now, my employer will enter this universe quite soon. I will then relinquish my custody to him, and she will serve as his handmaid for an eternity to be specified. As you must have also gathered, she has already done so. Though her most common of blood should have let her expire in just a dozen or two sweeps, his curse kept her very much alive, and she did not intend to stay that way. A dozen or two sweeps. One sweep is about... What do they usually say? Somewhere between two and two and a half years? They don't live very long. Also, I'm on the, under the impression that, that uh, trolls are a level of precocial that far exceeds any species that I know of. Then again, we don't have any species on Earth that are precocial and capable of language in the same way that we are. Because it makes me just wonder how trolls are able to be socialized and function properly when they're raised by things that don't speak the same language and don't provide the same level of care. Because with humans, physiologically, we cannot survive without love and affection. I'm guessing with trolls, they're a lot hardier in that sense. Because the level of abuse she's been put through for a human would leave her gibbering and non-functional. Trolls are tough. <laughs> um. Oh man. Don't eat the forward arrows. I love that dress. Dang. His curse is one of conditional mortality, with a desired outcome contingent on her service. When I release her, she will take her place at his side and travel through time to carry out his orders. While I am his weapon of subtlety and precision, the handmaid is strictly in her apparatus of terror and suffering. We have both paved the road to his arrival, I in my way and she in hers. She would be present during every watershed moment in her civilization's development. Her recurrence in history would earn her the reputation of a demoness, more feared than even her master, a man through dreadful, though dreadful, rarely makes himself seen. She stirred up class warfare and intensified bigotry in whatever era she haunted. She made sure the descendants would enter a world which prepared them well for the game, and took measures to see that they would play as they did. But once they entered and their world was in ashes, her work was nearly complete. Now, six centuries later, she would be given one last order to follow before her curse was lifted. A simple recruitment job. <laughs> Dang, that's a lot of hair. The handmaid will enlist the condes, extending the same bargain once offered to her. It will be the sort involving neither negotiation nor possibility of refusal, expressed in terms plainly understood by the psychotic genocidal. The condes will serve as her new master's witch, carrying out his work in the places he cannot reach. <laughs> Tyrion versus Rust. The last trolls alive, blood of Rust and royalty, will make each other pay for the crimes against their race. Their payment will be mutually dealt in the currency of punishment and reward at once. The Condess will be rewarded with the power and immortality her new service entails, and punished by the grueling slavery for which it is synonymous. And you, young lady, are to be punished by death at the hands of your replacement. And so, too, will this be your reward. And so, my dear, that is the inspiring tale of your people, and why you should feel rather privileged to be in the position for which I have groomed you meticulously. Are you not grateful? Yes, surely you are, and it warms the soft, fluffy material in my chest to know this. What is it? What are you looking at over there? Ah, of course, the clock. I can see you have a good eye for fine timepieces. Your exemplary taste is certainly owed to quality upbringing. Perhaps you wish to know the history of the clock and how I came to possess it. Yes, I can see the sparkle of curiosity in your eye. It's a marvelous tale, one almost as long as it is verbosely told. Where do I even begin? Story time's over, windbag. Whoops, oh shit, get this fucking clock out of my way. I have a one man stampede and I've got a broom and that peel of splintering wood you fear is the last gasp of a priceless antique disintegrating beneath the outrageous fury of my authorial hooves. If I have to put up with one more smug meandering interlude of my own story, I'm going to crack your head open and serve you a heaping bowl full of your downy soft puppet ass. How do you like that for hospitality, Doc? I believe you will find that as hosts go, I am simply the best there is. Yeah, <laughs> I ship it. 
<laughs> See, even that little girl has had enough of your shit. Run, Aradia's ancestor, run! You have locked up your last Asian schoolgirl, you sick fuck. Oh, don't you flop around at me like that. Are you listening, little man? The funny part is, Hussy, they're all your children. She's a scabbing girl. <laughs> yeah. Pew. Suckers. Booyah. Hmm. Hmm. Whoop. He is puppet. I guess... I guess he is just the limp, lifeless puppet when I'm around. Like a reverse Calvin and Hobbes kind of thing. That is... That is a little disturbing. <laughs> You there, girl? <laughs> Sorry, when I see girl in big letters, that's all I can think of. Girl, quit all this scurrying around. No, never. Oh, well, might as well try to get the disc back. I wonder if I can just sort of reach up into... And I wouldn't. Yeah. Do you believe you can escape me before I arrive? Oh, is it supposed to be Lord Spanish? It's Lord Spanish, right? How do you expect to outrun me? <laughs> Bulging eyeball. What the hell? Looks like he had the disc repaired for a while already, but didn't tell us. Motherfucker just loves the sound of his own voice. Why, certainly I do. There's a bug flying right in here. Snop! When I am already here. Ollie's outie. Well, Jesus. Fuck. Oh, you dumb homo, you're snaping wrong. You're s it's supposed to be a little more severus than Nunes. Nunes! Unschnop. <laughs> and the gray just seemed so weird. I insert disc two. Okay. Get this all sorted out. Bring away. I should probably turn the volume down. That was actually, uh. I didn't click on that. I was going to launch into an explanation, but okay. 5x showdown kombu. I can be quiet for a second. Pants cat! Random fan art. It's Troll Jagus. Fan art seems really, really, really out of place. I'm not sure how I feel about it. Like, it's pretty and everything, but it just feels weird for it to actually be in Homestuck. I will auspice this, this if I must. Can handle this. Pap the hell out. I think I hate him. Nope. Away with you. Will you stop? Invading my personal space much? We love you. Hmm. <laughs> Are you serious right now? 
Wait, did, did Sulfox really just express a brief vacillating crush on Yamsey? I have no idea how I feel about this because I thought that... Hmm. Huh. Well. I thought that, that Gamsol was just going to be a crack ship, but I guess in Homestuck there really are no crack ships because everybody's interested in everybody else at some point. That's why I like it so much. I am a shipper after all. Just not one of very discerning taste. <laughs> okay. Shishpapping. for life. And the Knight of Blood so embraced the Bard of Rage, and in each other's arms they were a quiver. And with righteous pap and blessed shush, he did quell his brother's fury. For the Knight looked upon his Bard, all acting up and completely losing his shit, and he did resolve to calmeth his juggalo ass right the fuck down. And so calmed his juggalo ass was, and would continueth to be for all time. And the Knight in totally settling a murderous clown's ludicrous shit down, proper said, let there be a, a moir allegiance. And it was so. And between morals would flow bounteous mirth, and they did hug bumpeth plentifully, and honks of reconciliation echoed far and true into the darkness upon the face of the deep. Let's close that tomb. And it was good. Let there be pale rom. Aw, yeah. N no, fuck this. <laughs> We're not going to do another recap. Besides, it's easier just to go on Tumblr, poke around in the tags for a while, and pretend you understand. I have not read a single recap yet. But I'm reading Homestuck in a suddenly different fashion. Because if I'm ever confused about something that happened before, I really just bring up one of my videos, because I have them nice and neatly sorted. Except I just keep forgetting to update the damn thing. Ugh, fuck this. Okay. Are we clicking more panels? Click the pen panels. Panels, plural. There's one panel. Doink. Carcinogeneticist CG began trolling Garden Gnostic GG. The password is see you soon. Okay, uh, I'm going to take your lack of response as a tacit verification. Also, this pretty much has to be the last conversation we have, right? Your timeline cuts out completely in a minute or two because of the scratch. What are you looking at up there? Are you hypnotized by the flashy shit? What the fuck? That's been going on ever since John started scratching that big goddamn record. Aren't you acclimated to me by now? Hello? Harley, Jigus, mother of screaming fuck. <sighs> Whatever, I have shit to do now. I guess I should be keeping an eye on the sky too, now that I think about it. The bright green beacon should be appearing any minute, assuming you actually manage to blow up the sun. And then, well, then I guess maybe we all get to hang out. Well, maybe also not being an unyielding mortal peril? It's getting kind of old, frankly. Okay, well, this is a pretty crappy farewell, but I guess it'll have to do since there is something seriously show-stopping shit transpiring up there in fucking outer space. Later, Jade, I'm going to make sure John knows what the hell he's supposed to be doing. And in case none of this works and we don't actually get to meet, I guess I should say, since apparently my gutless future self can't express himself and never got around to saying so, thus leaving it up to me, as usual, to say that... Oh, sorry, I was distracted. Oh. No, not by all the stretchy stuff in the sky. There's something coming down. What? Broken arrow? Huh. Oh, it's a shiny tadpole and an eight ball. It's hard to make out, but I think 
It might be. What? Hmm? Shaving cream? <laughs> the end. What the hell is shaving cream? It's like carcinogenesis, CJC, strong garden, gnostic, GG. Hey! Car cat? <laughs> it's the courtyard droll coming down with an ass load of shaving cream. Trolls have facial hair? They don't really seem like they even have any kind of body hair either, huh? I just had a thought. Hmm? Kaboom! Foam! Bloop. No! <laughs> Yay! I did it! I killed the girl! Okay, cutting this video short because I need to dedicate an entire video to this thing because apparently it's like 13 minutes long. <laughs> and play <-o. laughs>